Hi guys, I want to talk to you today about the first seal and I can't believe that um, at this stage of uh, wrapping up my ministry and Bible prophecy I'm actually talking about this um, because I'm just like I say wrapping up Bible prophecy and making everything available both uh, illustration book and video explanations. And it just so happens that I never actually made a video for the first seal. But I suppose you could say the best to last, but it's one of the most important things because seal number one is the first event, physical event that you're gonna see. It's not from the heavens to be heard on earth, it's actually an earthly thing in its entirety. And that is um, written in Revelation 6, and it says when he opens one of the seals, uh, I heard a great a voice like thunder, a voice like thunder, thunder, obviously, thunder and lightning, we know what it is. Um, so it's a real thing, it's not really from heaven. Uh, I mean, in the heaven, not to seen by earth, it's between heaven and earth. A voice of thunder, and don't forget that, you know, the Trinity, you had lightning strike on the Vatican when the last Pope, well, when the previous Pope, I mean, resigned and it was a whack, a lightning strike before Francis came in, the last Pope. And then when Barack Obama was in office, there was another stranger uh, just after he'd given an Easter sort of um, talk or whatever announcement, or he he failed to uh, announce anything about Easter, I think it was, that there was a whack lightning strike and everyone's seen it. So that's two out of the Trinity. There's a third left, and this is what the seal, first seal is. So just think about that. A voice like thunder, thunder, lightning. Could it be that the Trinity whoosh, is sealed with lightning, the third part of the Trinity? Which is uh, the Antichrist. And that, I heard a voice like thunder saying, come and see. And there was a rider on a white horse and he had a he had a bow and a crown was given to him and he came forth conquering and to conquer so a white horse symbolizing peace and he come and a crown was given to him and he came forth conquering and to conquer so by the way, like I said, this is the first event of the end of the age because this is the first of the seven seals. We got seven seals. And they roll on immediately to seven trumpets. And they move on immediately to the seven bowl judgments. So the beginning of the seven seals, seal number one, is the first event of everything. And it's the crowning of the Antichrist. Now, he comes out to conquer and to conquer, and he's riding on a white horse. This means this king, obviously, because he's given a crown. Comes out peacefully on a white horse. With peace he shall destroy many. So this is obviously talking about the false Christ or the false peace, the false saviour. Because he's the only one that conquers. It says he comes out to conquer and to conquer. Like if you go on in Revelation, it says he rules. You know, in Daniel it says the king d does as he will. Revelation says that the beast will be able to continue for 42 months, which is the last three and a half years. So this guy will conquer the world. It's only until later on in Revelation, actually in the Battle of Armageddon, does Jesus conquer and defeat him. So this first seal about this rider on a white horse, a king coming to conquer, is talking about the false Christ who will come through the end of the age. Like I said, it's not until the king of kings comes down Armageddon to defeat him. So yeah, seal number one is the Antichrist, the one who's coming 
the fake Christ, the clone of Jesus Christ. Who will come to deceive many and to be an, um, an imposter pretending to be the saviour of the world. given a crown and he sits on that throne of David actually that his grandmother sits on at the moment his grandmother sits on at the moment see if you look at the throne there you'll see harps of David and you'll see the lions of Judah now <clears throat> this throne came from Israel um, after the fall of the the empire and such now Jesus was the rightful heir to the throne because he was the d descendant of Joseph his father but because Jesus didn't have any children the heirship to David's throne stopped at Jesus Christ you understand so the people that sit on the throne of David today the Queen are not the actual heirs from David they're just their own family who who sit on their seat um, and have their own heirship but they're not descendants of David at all but the throne went from Israel when it was, and uh, like it says in, um, I think it's Ezekiel, it was overthrown, 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 and it shall be no more, I think, until the one who has the right comes and sits on it, meaning Jesus Christ return at the thousand year reign. So it was overthrown from Isla, Israel, to Ireland that's how the Irish got their emblem of the harp it's not because you know harp, it's because of the throne of David and then it was overthrown to Scotland uh, the this family who was this person called Scooter and that's how Scotland got his name and then it was overthrown from Scotland to England and of course that's how the English got their emblem of a lion from the throne of David which had the lions of Judah of course there's no lions in England mate except in the zoo <laughs> yeah this is you know, does it all make sense now and you look at that throne you'll see what I mean that's the actual throne of David That they sit on. So when the Antichrist is crowned, not only is he crowned and sits on the throne of David, you know, imagine that. The clone of Christ who's come in to deceive people, to make them believe that he is the Christ, actually sits on the throne of David. I mean, that's an abomination in itself. Do you know what I mean? That is just an, an abomination in itself. And when he sits on that throne of David, by the way, I hope people kind of click a little bit because if you type in let's say Google Jesus on the throne you might get some pictures of him with the throne and holding the um, not quite sure what it's called the little ball thing and he's got the um, like the the scepter or the sepulchre whatever they call it as well the scepter and I hope people click them when they see William sitting on the throne in his robes with all these things and the crown on his head I hope people then go wow yeah I've got it now yeah what end of the age pastor justin was saying about him being the the antichrist who's come in instead of christ wow that actually fits now i can see it visually so i hope that's what occurs and people there's a great revival among the nations but that is the first of the seals and probably the most important of all <laughs> and when that happens i'll be going out I'll be prophesying against him, no doubt. And I'll be travelling the UK. And I'll be coming back to right here, actually. Funnily enough, I hope that's amazing how God works, isn't it? I'll be coming back here to the safety of my mountain called the Conway uh, in the Snowdonia mountain range. And God has prepared even free fields here, if any of the saints want to come also. Prepared free fields here, a place of safety where God's throne passes over, you know, it's going to be earthquake, tsunami, volcanoes. It's going to be, like I said, 25 meters or so 
sea level rise. It's not a sea level rise, it's a land drop. So this is a safe haven. Um, yeah, so I'll give you a little bit of a tour actually. If you can see, I don't know. You see green pastures, which is quite uncommon at the moment because we've had we've had so much lack of rain that um, everything's brown. But these three, three, remember, being a great a great number as well. Like Jesus prayed three times, and they say, "Holy, holy, holy," is the Lord God Almighty. Three being a very nice number, and these three fields are beautiful green so if the saints did want to come here to collect or gather together for the throne of God coming down I suppose it'd be like a, a like a like a, a like the wedding supper I suppose it would be something of that uh, nature so uh, if that's God's will then that's God's will but I know for sure that I'll be coming back here for before the sixth seal before he passes over with great destruction upon the nations. Um, it's not because of fear or anything, it's because I know I'll survive and I know I'm going for tribulation with the rest of the 144,000 saints to preach the word. So God will survive us, it's just people need to think, well, where? sure God's spirit will come upon them and they'll all flee to their own little exodus place as I call it this is my exodus spot here and I've been preparing for a while now for this got my exodus bag ready even more thanks to the crown there for stopping me from going home now I'm living out of my exodus bag and Things have just been completing and goals have been fulfilled. So thanks for that. You tried to persecute me like Job, but God has, you know, absolutely magnified my blessings in other ways. So he can't win, even though they tried to win. So I've been Pastor Justin Roberts from End of the Age Bible Prophecy. God bless you all. And in a few hours, it will be Shabbat Shalom. Happy Lord's Day. Amen.